Hello everybody and welcome Hello. to RITF Gaming. Uh, today we are two reviewers, this is a Rift Reviews, where Dylan is a PC gamer, I'm a retro gamer, and today we're going to be reviewing Nintendo Wii U. That's Let's get started. The Nintendo Wii U. initially launched here in Europe in November 2012, uh, late 2012 for most, and 2013 in Brazil. The standard console should come with either 8GB or 32GB worth of storage space. The way to tell the difference between the models is the 8GB model is white, the 32GB model is black. We use the first Nintendo console to support full HD graphics and can go as high as 1080p resolution and actually has more 60 frames per second supporting games than the Xbox One or PS4. The GPU is an AMG chip that is clocked at a subdued 550 MHz and is codenamed Latte and is held up by a 1.24 GHz chip codenamed Cappuccino. Apparently the console was designed in the local cost of right. It also has 2 gigabytes of DDR3 RAM predictably to help it to help it motor along nicely, not too shabby at all. Back of the console you will find a HDMI port as well as the more traditional AV multi-out, uh, sensor bar slots and power outlets, as well as two USB ports. There's another two USB ports on the front along with an SD card slot for Wii game, game saves and general function buttons. It's a nice looking console overall, although that piano style gloss finish is of course a fingerprint magnet and shows scratches insanely easily. The controller is the subject of some debate, but neither of us can really understand why. Its only real fault is the pretty low battery life. It's typically around 5-6 to six hours depending on screen brightness. Although this is a pretty simple fix, uh, you can go online and there are high capacity battery replacements available which ups it to around 9-10 to 10 hours battery life. Not stunning, but it's still not too bad for what, how much the controller is doing. It has what is now standard fare for a controller in terms of its buttons with two analogue sticks which we feel are fantastically placed for first person shooter fans out there. As well as having four face buttons, four lovely shoulder buttons and a 6.2 inch single touch screen amongst the rest. The screen is still capacitive, however, much more sensitive, which is a huge plus for me. The screen is a fantastic and immersive when used correctly, and can stream games from the console output with barely any lag. In fact, we noticed no lag. I tested it with a high-speed camera, and the Wii U game badge actually received the footage before the TV. This is very confusing. I'm amazed by this. This is an incredible technical achievement from what is perceived to be an underpowered device by the rest of the community. Maybe the magic powder they've been stepping has passed on to the Wii U too. Who knows? Admittedly, it isn't quite as good as the quality TV, being at 1080p versus 480, but you kind of have to be looking for it to notice it. The physical games come in the standard style of DVD sort of case box and that light blue, which is just coloured differently. And the discs hold 25 gigabytes of data. It's effectively Nintendo's proprietary Blu-ray disc. And being me be trying to be funny, I like to call it the U-ray disc. It also has complete backwards compatibility with the Wii. Sadly though, it doesn't play safe as that. Overall, the system is pretty impressive for what it is, and we're both super surprised from our first impressions of the console. It's the first time really both of us have had a good hour, a couple of hours with everything working properly. So my yeah. internet's been pretty ropey at the moment. And I'm just, we're both really surprised that there haven't been more takers to the machine. At the time of this video going up, it's been just over 10 million units sold, which is actually the slowest selling Nintendo console of all time, apart from the virtual console. If I'm honest, the technical aspect has stunned me the most. With the screen, it's just right. It's 480p, so it's not incredibly overly detailed than it needs to be. It, it looks good. Not amazing, but definitely, definitely um, good enough. Playing Mario Kart 8 earlier looked super smooth on both the TV and the gamepad, and possibly both running at over 30 frames per second. It would be hard for me to imagine that they're both running at 60, especially as I believe the gamepad runs over Bluetooth, but it looked it. Best yet, the console has barely gotten hot in any of our testing. We couldn't get it anywhere near uncomfortably warm, and when I put my hand onto the plate, onto the case of the Wii, it, it was not hot to the touch at all. It, it wasn't even warm. 
more impressed with certain aspects of this console in the few hours I've had to play with it than the PS4. I wouldn't be in a position to call either console better than the other, however the Wii U seems to be more technologically amazing rather than the, the PlayStation 4. <laughs> Alright guys, so that was our sort of first impressions of the Wii U looking at the hardware and the controller. Uh, both Dylan and I are going to be carrying on with this sort of mini-series in the Rift Reviews uh, position where we're going to be planning to get um, the part, second part, which will be the Using interface face and the function. So, what, you know, uh, the third part is going to be the games, and the fourth part will be a summary. So, if there are bits there that you're not too fussed about, like part, second part, fourth part, whichever, you can just skip those. So, we've made it kind of a bit more bite sized. Yeah. But um, subscribe for more if you don't want to miss those, and uh, have um, fun. Yeah. Have a nice day, everybody. Stuff. Goodbye. Bye.